Hi, my name is Jordan Klebanoff. I'm an OBGYN resident at Christiana Hospital, and welcome to this week's episode of Pocket Pearls. Welcome to this week's episode of Pocket Pearls. I'm here with my two co-residents, Dr. Beth Leopold and Dr. Stephanie Gargano. And we're gonna talk about sepsis today. So sepsis is defined as a life-threatening organ dysfunction from a dysregulated host response to infection. It can lead to things like altered mental status, acute lung injury, thrombocytopenia, kidney failure, and many other things. So usually as residents, when we're in situations where we're evaluating patients that we suspect sepsis, we're either seeing them in REDs or we're paged to the floor. So we're going to talk about uh, how to encounter those patients with Dr. Leopold. What would be my first clue that a patient's becoming septic? That's a great question, Dr. Leopold. The first sign of sepsis is usually a fever and elevated white count. Fever is defined in a couple ways by different societies. The first um, criteria for a fever is any elevated temperature above 38.3 degrees Celsius. The second definition is two temperatures between 38 and 39 degrees Celsius at least 30 minutes apart, or one greater than or equal to 39 degrees Celsius. What do I do when I get to the bedside? When I get to the bedside, usually my first test is the eyeball test. So I look, and does this patient look sick or not sick to me, because it helps me determine my urgency. After that, make sure you have a recent set of vitals, and then start with the airway. So make sure the patient is uh, oxygenating well, and if not, feel free to apply supplemental oxygen. Any septic patient should maintain their oxygenation. What do I do if the patient's hypotensive? The most important thing to do when you first get to the bedside and someone's hypotensive is make sure that they have a large bore IV running, like a 16 or 18 gauge. The next thing to do is make sure that they have IV fluids running. So these patients often require a lot of IV fluids in order to get their blood pressure back up. It's best to start with a two liter bolus of normal saline. What about examining the patient? That was an excellent question, Dr. Leopold. So your exam should be happening while you're doing all of these initial things. Usually we don't know these patients, so take a very brief focus history. Is she postpartum, antepartum, post-op? Doing your exam can hopefully identify a source, and then you can tailor your treatments and therapies. What if I can't identify a source? Oh, if you're unable to identify a source, it's important to initiate a broad workup to identify where the infection is coming from. Basic labs that um, are useful are a CMP, a CBC to assess white count, lactic acid, as well as obtaining urine and blood cultures. You can also order a chest x-ray as that's quick and easy in order to rule out a lung process. It's important to remember that you shouldn't delay starting antibiotics for more than 60 minutes just to perform the workup. Is there anything else I should do as part of my initial workup? The only thing that I have to add is kind of touch on what Dr. Gargano was talking about. So one thing that's been shown to decrease mortality is early initiation of antibiotics. If you don't have a source that you've been able to localize, it's not wrong to start with something broad spectrum. If you can use your exam to focus your antibiotics, great. If not, remember you can always scale back your antibiotics based on your blood and your urine cultures once they result back. So what I'm getting from this is I need to make the diagnosis by getting the appropriate lab workup and imaging, and I need to initiate treatment by giving IV fluids and either specific or broad spectrum antibiotics depending on my exam. Yeah, and what's important is that these things definitely overlap and you don't want to delay treatment while you're trying to seek out the diagnosis. All of this should be kind of happening concomitantly. Different societies define a fever. So <laughs> 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 That's my bad. <laughs> That's a great question, Dr. Leopold. There, uh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question, Dr. Leopold. The first sign of a fe fever. Why do I keep saying fever? It's your fault. If you don't know the patient, try to take a beef hit. <laughs> <laughs> Just take down her beef, take some beef. and then uh, <laughs> take, take the beef, beef, rub it up. Uh. <laughs> 